The World Health Organization released a 270-page document outlining sperm analysis, and that's what we're going to be following roughly along in this video. You can find it in the description below. Only certain types of microscopes can actually even see sperm. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out my what microscopes to see sperm video before this one. First, you're going to start out by collecting your sample in a jar. I'm sure you can figure out how to do this part. Next, you're gonna wanna take your jar and leave it out for 30 minutes to an hour just sitting on a countertop or something like that. Or ideally, if you can, keep it at body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, maybe in between your thighs, watch a TV show, something like that. But this is a really important step because if you've ever noticed, semen has kind of this like sticky, strandy protein kind of coagulation in it. Um, and this, this protein structure can trap sperm inside of it. And so then you get this sort of not homogeneous uh, quantity of sperm concentration throughout the sample. But thankfully, semen contains protease enzymes also, which go and break down and liquefy those protein structures. So that's the purpose of, of letting it sit out. Next, you're gonna wanna swirl the sample to mix it all up. As I mentioned, the concentration of sperm within the ejaculate is pretty variable, especially the very first part, part of the ejaculate has a really high concentration of sperm, and then after that, it's a, a bunch of just like seminal fluid without a ton of sperm in it. So the, the swirling around part is really important. Do it for about maybe 30 seconds or something like that. Try not to entrap too many air bubbles in the sample. You can also see that my, my sample here has fully liquefied. It's, it, this has been sitting out for about 30 minutes, and it, it is totally different. You can, you can definitely tell when this is liquefied. Now we're gonna transfer some of our sample onto a microscope slide, just taking out a regular microscope slide. I like to have some kind of a standoff or something to hold the microscope slide up above the table so it doesn't get any kind of dust particles underneath of it on the underside. I'm gonna have our cover slips out and ready. Typically what I'll tend to do, make sure never to touch the optical faces of these components. I like to take it out and then sometimes you'll accidentally grab like five cover slips, that's okay because it comes with a ton of them. I also like to just preemptively set it down on something again, making sure that you don't set it down directly flat on the table because then dust particles are going to get all over it. Now make sure that every time before you take a sample out of your collection jar, you do a re-swirling ideally for 30 seconds. Do that now. Next, right after swirling, you're going to want to collect approximately 10 uh, microliters of the, your sample, put it on the microscope slide. I'm using a micropipette here, but you can also just get away with using a plastic dropper. 10 microliters is approximately like a fifth of a drop of water, so it's a very small amount. And the reason why we're doing this quantity is because it, it gives the right depth for the semen to be able, to, or sorry, the sperm to be able to swim around in it, but it's not so much that the depth of field is going to be too much. Essentially what you're looking for here is that when you put the microscope cover slip right over it, and when you do this, you like to just go on it and drop it on flat. What you want is you want the liquid to spread out evenly to the entire microscope slide cover slip without going over, like getting out of the edges or like not fully going to the, to the boundaries there. Turn on the transmitted light source of your microscope. And we're going to start on the lowest magnification objective. You can take that microscope slide you just prepared and put it right over in the middle of the light source. Boom, just like that. In this case, we are using the MicroSafari Sperm Observation Kit, which comes with a USB camera. This is actually a pretty critical part of this kit because it has really good edge detection. And at this magnification, you can barely see little swarms, sperm swimming around in there. And that's why we wanna go up to the next magnification up. This is the 10 times objective now, and this is really gonna be kind of the bread and butter when you are looking around for sperm. So you can see there are some little floating particles, but those, of course, aren't the sperm. But it looks like we do have some of the sperm in this shot. I mean, really, anywhere I go, you're pretty much gonna be seeing sperm. Now going up to the highest magnification objective, this is a 40 times magnification objective for a total of 1,000 times magnification because the camera adds a little bit more as well. You can see there are, are some sperm that are kind of outside of the field of view. And there's one. You can see what that looks like at 1,000 times magnification. We have pretty clear... Pretty, pretty easy to tell what's sperm and what's not sperm. In a clinical laboratory setting, they're gonna be using a, 
uh, phase contrast microscope, which makes them even more obvious. But I would say that if you just get the, the correct lighting system on a regular bright field microscope, that'll totally work as well. Again, you can check out the What Microscopes Can See Sperm video. There's a lot more detail on the illumination system. It's worth pointing out that if your microscope has a condenser on it, such as on the Horizons microscope, the condenser is down under here, you're going to need to close the aperture diaphragm of the condenser all the way down, uh, which essentially ends up giving you the same illumination system as this microscope has, which is even without a condenser. You really need that light to be straight up, um, hitting the sample at very like direct right on angle. And you'll notice as you watch this video of mine, there are a bunch of sperm all over, but they're not, most of them are not really moving around. I think it's because I'm in a relatively cold, like little office warehouse right now, and so these sperm aren't really moving around. I mean, this guy clearly has, he's, he's got the zoomies, but the rest of them, uh, it could have also been that I did end up doing quite a lot of swirling the sample around um, when I, I took multiple shots on the camera and whatnot. Um, but there are a lot of different variables that are, will contribute to how much the sperm end up moving around, and I've, I've certainly seen at least quite a bit of variability, but like pretty easy to see sperm, right? I mean, they're, they're all over the place. I just put this in a random spot and there, there are sperm everywhere in the field of view. And I mean, that's pretty much it. It's, it's not that hard. And that was using our Micro Safari Sperm Observation Kit. Now, if you want to see it on a more expensive microscope, let's do that right now. This is going to be a $1,000 microscope. Okay, this is the, I mean, eventually we're going to release this as the Horizons Pro microscope. This is a $1,000 microscope, and it's going to be a little bit more complicated for me to set up because there's just more stuff going on here. I now have it on a different microscope camera as well. Reach around. So first thing is that I'm going to need to get it into cooler illumination. Start with the field, closing down the field diaphragm. And now I need to align the condenser close enough. And now you can adjust the height of the condenser so that you can see the fringes of the iris of the field diaphragm. All right, now you can recenter the condenser again because now it's changed. Now you can open up the field diaphragm to be full and it looks like my exposure on the camera is doing okay. Maybe crank it up just a little bit. You know, really you gotta nail the exposure here if you want you want the ideal settings on the camera. Okay, so that's, that's all set up now. We're gonna go up to a higher magnification. Okay, so now we're we're up here, and again, we do have the condenser iris all the way shut. Now we can start seeing seeing some sperm. I think the brightness is also all the way up already. I'm trying to like feel for everything here. Okay, yeah, that's all the way up. Um, need to increase the exposure time. Now a higher magnification. Okay, now we're seeing some sperm moving around. As you can tell, it's a little bit less magnified than it was before um, because this camera doesn't add the same magnification levels that the other one does. Let's see if I can get this guy in the center so we can go up to the next highest magnification. This is a 40 times objective now with the camera, which adds maybe like another 10 times magnification, something like that. So if we really diligent about opening up this, and now I can refocus on the sample. And there they are. So I mean, admittedly, this doesn't actually look all that much better on a significantly more expensive microscope. And it really comes down to the way that you're lighting up the sample. I think in this case, that's, that's the most important part. Of course, this microscope look, makes regular samples look a lot better than this other much less expensive microscope does. But in this very particular case, you can get away with a pretty inexpensive microscope as long as you have it set up correctly. I mean, this is definitely higher quality, but not, not by a substantial margin. Um, and if you do want to get to kind of the next echelon of image quality, you're going to be looking at getting a phase contrast microscope, which is minimum $2,000. What we're really trying to achieve with the sperm observation kit is to give you 80% of the value at a tenth of the price. Now you can see sperm under a microscope, but what information can you actually ascertain from this? Can you count sperm at home? Can you evaluate the motility of your sperm and the health? Well, you can check out this video here, can you count sperm at home? Uh, spoiler alert, it talks about a lot more than just counting sperm. It's about what you can actually do at home, what you can evaluate. Check, check out that video here.